Folks, what's going on? Arm and Hammer here. The following is an interview with Haley Adams. She took sixth her rookie year at the 2019 CrossFit Games and flew under the radar for most of that. But this year, she qualified for the final five in commanding fashion, taking third in stage one of the 2020 CrossFit Games, which means there's no more flying under the radar for her. And she's surrounded by absolute excellence, training in a facility at Rich's Place that has her constantly with and against Rich, Tasia, and some of the other best CrossFitters in the world. It really is fascinating to see someone this young, talented, and driven in an environment that's actually going to turn all of that into real-world performance. So I think you guys are going to enjoy this one. I'll see you very soon. Take care. I love the pinata. Oh yeah, thanks. Yeah, he's uh, he's dope. Um, we call, my wife named him Boner because oh. yeah, he was uh, he was there at her bachelorette party. Like they went to Mexico and they had this they had this pinata there, and uh, she brought him back. So instead of like tearing him up, like filling him with candy or whatever, and tearing him up, she like brought him back on the plane, and he's been in my little like set somehow ever since. Perfect. So, yeah. And so we call him the little uh, BRP, Boner the Rainbow Pinata. Perfect. And he's just always there. Uh, <laughs> congratulations on making it to the top five, Haley. Thank you. Um, third, right? Overall? Mm-hmm. Wow. That's pretty, uh, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. You take it. <laughs> so talk to me a little bit about how it feels to have made that like qualifying uh, cut. Well, I think going into it, no one knew what to expect. Like, was it going to be the open or, I mean, no one knew. So I, I mean, I knew I was super fit at the time. Um, but also I, like I said, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know how the events were going to be. So I wanted to make that spot, but I also was going to be content if I didn't make it, if that makes like sense. Um, so (laughs) grabbing a spot out of 30 incredible fit women, it really is a confidence booster and just makes me appreciate all the hard work I've put in all year and know that it's paying off. Oh, for real. I mean, it's the, the competitive field on the women's side is so much deeper than a men's side. Every, I mean, it's almost like the top 12 or 15 even could fight for one of those top five spots and legitimately have a claim at it. So one of the things that, um, and we'll talk a little bit more into like the specific events and stuff, but one of the things that really stood out to me, and I spoke with uh, Tommy Marquez about this and a couple other people at Justin LaFranco and stuff. And one of the things that really stood out is the fact that you had a really poor showing on the front squat compared to the field and it did not stop you from taking third like just across the board with every other event you were so much better than the average athlete out there that it was you were able to overcome what should have been like a finish that was so low that it wasn't going to be able to you know do you have like does does that does that give you like confidence does that make you worried about strength stuff are you just like all right I'm on the right track like what does that mean for you yeah, I, for me personally, I don't have super high one rep maxes. Um, my top strength is just not there yet. And I mean, that's one event. I am more concerned. I've put in more work this year of working with a heavier barbell um, just for reps, not just get my one rep max up. I mean, that goes up over time when you keep working like that. But I've gotten way more comfortable with working with heavier loads this year. So, I mean... I just, I think fitness, the fittest will be there. And um, yeah, I I don't really know how to explain it. I just, yeah, the the fittest will be there. And obviously, I mean, I'm not the strongest, but I can still move a barbell. And I think that that comes to a shock sometimes to people that just because I can't front squat 300 pounds, like I can't still move a decently heavy barbell. So I think that's why everyone was so surprised. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I think, I think people, people, I, I don't know if they really get uh, like one of the things that you're really good at 
and kind of sets you apart from the rest of the field is like, not only do you have this competitive history from like teenage years into the, the senior into the open, but your like background and your um, sort of base is the engine, which yeah. is a really big deal because it, it makes a difference when you have to sort of like rev up to sprint four times in one day. Yeah. Um, you know, so it, it, it makes a really big deal and you don't have kind of the, the last person that was like that was Sam Briggs and Sam was like phenomenally far back in terms of her strength and was never really able to make it up. And so the big difference is that, you know, she's literally twice your age. So you have plenty of time to make strength yeah. up and your, your engine is strong enough that like you're there, you know? Right. Like I didn't have brute strength coming into the sport and I, that's just not something that's been on my side. I've had to work really, really hard to just even get where I'm at now. So, I mean, thankfully I did have that background of gymnastics and cross country and swimming and soccer, softball, every, literally like everything for like an engine side. But yeah, I mean. Let's, uh, let's talk about the season a little bit because the season has been a little bit funky for yeah. every human being on the face of the planet. Uh, you are, you're one of two athletes in the top five, uh, one on the women's side, one on the men's side that qualified for the games, I believe through a sanctionals invite. Yours was through strength and depth. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you had done pretty well in the open, but like not quite at that, like top 20 and you already were planning on qualifying through the sanctionals. You were able to get that in before the. Uh, shutdowns all happened. What was it like, you know, obviously a little bit of a relief that you have your spot based through the sanctions and you're good to go. But what was it like trying to actually train through, you know, not really knowing what was going to happen with the games or if there was going to be games or how that was going to even pan out? I mean, it was really hard because once everything started shutting down, like I was still living in the dorms in college. So they're like, back your stuff, get out. And this is like mm, March, like the end of March. So I had to go home to North Carolina for about two months. So I was away from here and I don't know why it was hard. I mean, just trying to get up every day and train for, you don't know what, cause everything's getting canceled and they, they switched rogue to online. So you're like, are the games even going to happen? And it was really, really hard uh, for those few months, but thankfully it was still farther away. Like then I guess it was still two-ish months away from Rogue or a month. But then thankfully I had found a place to stay here um, in May. So I was able to get back here and train, which is, it's always easy when you have a group here. So after that, I had no issue and just got my butt up and worked every day with them. Yeah, it's got to be, it's, it's, it's still like mentally, it was hard. It was really hard because you're just like, felt like you were just had like, you're on the gas pedal, like just going back and forth and don't know when to stop, start, slow down. Just that was hard mentally. Yeah. Especially, you know, you have such a fantastic crew that you train with every yeah. single day. And, you know, there's just decades of experience between all those athletes. Um, you know, not being almost like forced out of that situation for like six, seven weeks is probably yeah, a real hard. To the gut. Yeah. Hard just sitting at home every day and not having anything to do. I had most of everything I needed at home, but still it's hard. Especially yeah. everything going on. So once you did get back into Cookville and you started, you know, you were seeing Rich again every day. You're seeing Tasia again every day. Like the girls were all there. Um, you know, the crew was there basically. You know, what, what, and I'm, I already see the smile on her face. You're like, yeah, it was awesome. I loved it. Uh, <laughs> the, the experience there, you know, like the, the collective know how of how to compete in this sport. You know, did you, did you lean on them to help you out with sort of like staying emotionally on like a, a relatively level playing field as all this like uncertainty was happening? Oh yeah. I, I mean, the thing about Rich is that Rich does two sessions a day, no matter what kind of season it is. So it's not hard to get yourself and get up and get motivated, but I really leaned on them a lot to, you know, make me train like super hard when I didn't want to, or we didn't know what was going to happen because I know that they're showing up. So I need to show up and give my best effort. So I leaned on them a lot this year and they definitely helped me out. Was the last time, uh, the last time I was out there, 
you guys were prepping for the games. It was like right before the games. Oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and your, yeah, your training was like, you were doing basically everything that they were doing as a team, but individually yeah. and then yeah. some. Yeah. So is that what it has continued to be like? Or are you, are you sort of being a little bit more, you know, surgical with how you're approaching uh, your programming? Or is it still like, hey, you know what? It works and I love it and we're going to keep doing it. Um, the second option, yes. But after madness got canceled um rich would program things that maybe specifically i needed to work on you know but as far as the format we still did the same thing show up right what's on the board i don't want to do this or you need to do this so we kind of did that a little bit more for me was which and before they had to like put themselves first and i still got super fit off of that but he's like hey we need to do some squat cleans today i'm like okay you're like okay but what if we just do like running and double unders instead how about that (laughs) so in like the past few months it's it's kind of been more of that but it works super well for me how he programs and how just our schedule is yeah the the that environment i think cannot be understated you know that excellence breeds excellence and that place is a just a shrine to excellence right going back to like when i was at home um, they would still, he would still send us the workouts and stuff. And I'm like, I can't get myself to do it. There's just something about being in the barn that I look back and I'm like, how did I do that workout? Like, how did I do that? And there's some things I just could not get myself to do like at home. Cause I'm like, no, that's what I'm saying. Just that environment. You just have to know it. You have to see it and you have to feel it. What's the, what's the toughest thing you've done in there? Oh boy. I don't know. I've done so, uh, well, there's just been so many crazy workouts. I mean, I can remember workouts when it was at least like, there was one workout, I think it was 25 Lego soap pumps. Yeah, just like little <laughs> stuff like that sticks out in my mind. Yeah. yeah, that would stick out. That would stick out. But I guess what you're saying is they're all so ridiculous and so yeah. hard that there isn't yeah. one. Yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah, so so now that, you know, let's let's sort of like rewind to like right before the, the stage one of the games, right? Like you've had all this communication with CrossFit, you know, for a fact, it's going to happen. You know, that you, you're going to have all the events eventually. And like, you know, you're planning out this, the schedule that you have to keep. Did you, did you like talk to Rich? You're like, Rich, dude, I need you to do these workouts when they're announced. So I can have like a rabbit to chase. Or was that something that like he just did or like the girls did or like, you know, or were you just like, you know what? I've got this. I'm going to take this on. I don't don't need you guys. Um, You know, I'm kind of someone that I don't really like to do the workouts before. I don't really feel the need to. I mean, it does help, I guess, seeing someone go. But so I had uh, his his cousin-in-law. He was in Knoxville. So he was doing some of the workouts for me. He's on Independence. And um, no, Rich didn't do any of the workouts, though. But he would be like before, he would kind of tell me, him and Tasia would be like, hey, don't go out too hot or do it this way, do it that way. I mean, they know me pretty well, but I didn't really need to see anyone do it, I guess, if that makes sense. Tell me a little bit about your relationship with Tasia. Cause I think, I feel like that's such just like beautiful, like innocent, wonderful friendship that you guys have developed through it suffering. Really is. Because <laughs> last year um, when, when Dre was on the team, obviously there was three out of the four teammates there and China wasn't there. So I was China when she wasn't, training there so just through all that like Tasia and I would be partners and stuff and like we would just she pushed me so hard and it was we worked so well together because it's not like we're technically competing against each other but you know if she's doing it I want to do it you know so we pushed each other in that way and just became she became one of my best friends through it all and that's how it's been this year too and she's like my big sister literally (laughs) Yeah. And you guys have complementary uh, strengths and weaknesses, you know, like Literally. she's really good on the barbell and you've got yeah. all the gymnastics. So. Complete opposites. <laughs> yeah. So now that, um, now that the stage one is over with, you know, we have almost no time. I mean, it's going to be a blink of an eye and you're going to be you in California. You could just like teleport like to that yeah. time. You know? It's so weird. Yeah. Do you, do you almost wish it was like, this weekend instead of two weekends from now? Like, do you just wish like, get it over with, let's do this? Yeah, because they're, I mean, I, personally, I don't see myself getting any fitter from in two weeks, you know, I don't know who could do that, but 
yeah, so I just wish, or maybe just next weekend or something, like hit it hard this week and then taper next week. I could see that. That would be a little bit more reasonable, but just like that extra two weeks of just like trying to hang on, you know, it's, it's hard. Yeah. Cause you ride, you know, and Rich early in his career always talked about how his philosophy was like, you got to be ready to go. There's no such thing as tapering. Like I'm not going to do that when you've been going for over a year, literally I call, I've, I've qualified for the games like basically a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> And that's, that's the thing, right? Because that might have worked in, you know, 2012, but not only have we gotten a much better understanding of what leads to success, but also your season is like a year and a half long. Literally though. You didn't, you probably didn't take much time off between the games and the open. No, oh, I went to Hawaii for a week and that was literally it. Yeah. So, so you're, you're probably riding a very fine edge of like, peak fitness but also peak stressors right yeah I mean that's what I'm saying I there's no way that personally I could get any fitter I feel like I'm in my fittest right now I'm just trying to hang on and I'm sure everyone kind of feels the same way so just wish we <laughs> would come sooner because it's two weeks it's just hard you still got to go got to train pretty intense and then you can back off but just trying to hang on for that time did um did you guys get any information as to you know where you're showing up and what that's going to look like yet nothing yet and today is uh october 1st so hopefully something soon uh you're like the you're the <laughs> fifth one you're the fifth qualifier i've talked to and no one knows anything like no one knows where or when pink ticket or something you know like, <laughs> but like if we actually start then like the 19th like on the website i mean i want to get there a few days before you know so yeah I don't know if that 19 is check-in day or what's happening. So that'd be a good detail to have. Do you know that, do you know if you guys get like a plus one or anything? If it's how it was before, then I'm assuming, yeah, hopefully they were going to allow one, like one person. Who are you taking? Guess. Tasia? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's perfect. That's, that's yeah. perfect. Cause like at that point. Then. Yeah, you have you have someone who's like psychologically able to sort of, there. yeah she's to handle there. it. Yeah, that's that is that's actually a really good point because she competed there uh, when they went back to the ranch. Yeah, and she literally knows basically how I would do in any workout. She could probably tell you how I would break it up. <laughs> nice, that's yeah. a that's a good that's a good person to have in your corner. Yeah, uh, there is also the idea of you know this like top five being a really big opportunity because. You know, you made a really big splash last year, and I don't know if we've even gotten a chance to, like talk since your performance last year. So I might as well just congratulate you again on whatever <laughs> what twenty nineteen was like, because you know, like you showed up, and I think a lot of people were they were not. I think you caught a lot of people off guard. I don't yeah. think anybody saw that coming, and it probably worked in your favor a little bit. For sure. I don't like all the attention. <laughs> well, now, now you have, <laughs> I mean, there's nowhere to hide now, Haley. I, I mean, you, you, you crushed last year in person competition. You, you have a shot at the podium this year, like a, a real legit, like a legit <laughs> shot at the podium this year. And arguably the events that are going to show up in Aromas are probably going to be better for you than the events yeah. we saw at this stage one online. Right. Yeah, like, to be honest, looking at stage one, I mean, Rich said the same thing. I mean, it was such short time domains, like three to four minutes the first day. I'm like, oh crap. I mean, because, you know, I like a little bit in the seven to 10 time domain. And, you know, a lot of people can hang on for three to four minutes. So I was actually super nervous because I didn't know how I was going to hold up against like some of the girls. And that's the best part about it is that I seriously didn't think that those workouts were that great for me like on the first day because even the 1k row I mean I'm a good rower but you put someone that's 20 pounds heavier than me I'm a little bit on the smaller side and they're gonna freaking crank the rower out so I was really even worried about that so just seeing how I placed in those events like really made me super excited yeah and that's 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 a really good thing to to, to sort of point out um you know the programming wasn't something that you favor like the 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 main, the barn programming isn't like three minute burners. No, it's like three minutes and then do it 10 more times. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's like, that's exactly what it is. That's exactly. Yeah. What it is. I think, I think, you know, people, people might think like, oh, well, like, obviously you're just like doing hard workouts all the time. It's like, yeah, you're doing hard workouts and they're either like super tough intervals over and over and over again for like three or four minutes at a time, or you're doing like one 25 minute 
soul crusher. Exactly. Yeah. So that, I mean, not that we don't ever train that time domain. I just thought that maybe it would be a little bit harder to get some separation because that is such a short time domain, like four minutes, you know? Yeah. So uh, what I was, what I was getting at with this, uh, this final stage is that not only do you no longer have anywhere to hide, I mean, like you've already proven yourself to the point where everyone's going to be watching you, but you also just by virtue of the fact that there's only five competitors in each division, like everyone is going to be watching it, each competitor really closely. Does that like, you know, I'm not trying to like make you nervous, right? I'm just pointing out that this is a really cool opportunity. Like you could really capitalize on that and make an even bigger name for yourself in the sport. Yeah. I mean, I think it is a great opportunity is history basically being made in 2020. Um, yeah, I think it is, uh, I mean, if I could get on the podium, that would, <laughs> that even feels even crazy to say, like, it still doesn't even feel real. So I guess I'm still trying to process it all and have those feelings. Um, but yeah, I just, well, I don't know. It just doesn't feel real, honestly. Was, was there, I saw your little, cel- I saw your celebration video when you guys watched the, uh, the dance was like, I knew I'd made it, but then like everyone was there, but the real one was like after, um, I guess it was when they released the first two scores, but I had to, I had already done all the workouts. So I knew that I did pretty well in the last one. And that once I saw I had that gap, I was like, I definitely made it. <laughs> <Start crying. laughs> how, how did you, uh, how did you, how did you like celebrate? Did you, did you take like a few days off and sort of just try and like unwind and eat yeah. some beef or what? So I tried to, but I was, it was like stressing me out. I definitely took some time off, but I didn't want to like go crazy eating. Cause I knew that it would like make me feel bad, but I took, um, that Sunday and Monday off and then had to get back to it Tuesday. Yeah. Rich, rich. My CNS was dead. It was all CNS. <laughs> like I blacked out like five times over the weekend. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that is wild. That is absolutely wild. Uh, the last time I saw you, by the way, you were, you were literally running with holes in your running shoes. Tell me you've gotten a new pair of running shoes since then. Yes, I'm with Reebok now. <laughs> as many as I want. <laughs> Finally. Oh, Finally. Get this woman a pair of shoes. Finally. I know. I've got plenty now. No more worries. <laughs> Good. I'm glad to hear that. Well, yeah. Haley, you're, you're a, a, a rising star in the sport. You've like earned your, you've earned your spot among like the real contenders. And uh, it's really dope to see you compete out there. I'm excited to see what the, uh, what the ranch brings. I I hope, I I mean, you tell me what types of workouts do you want to see show up there? Well, literally everything that I love didn't show up on stage one, such as like an actual aerobic event, not with 75 overhead squats at 125. (laughs) Um, So yeah, some running, some muscle ups, some toes bar, all my favorite things that I've not even shown up yet. So anything in that aspect. That's that the song. These are a few of my favorite things. Yeah. And also like odd object stuff. Yeah. So I'm excited. Yeah. I can't wait for the dumbbells and the sandbags and the vests and the rucks and stuff to show up. I'm excited. It's still going to be a long week if it's actually a week. It's going to be all dead. That's another thing, right? Because uh, Monday to Saturday. who knows what that actual competition schedule looks like? You know, like, are they, are they going to keep you guys there all day long and put you guys on and off for events? Or is it going to be like one four hour block? Like who knows, but that's a long time. Six days is a long time. Yeah. Luckily, the barn is unforgiving and you're prepped. So, <laughs> very true. Oh. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Haley. I appreciate your time. Excited to watch you compete. Yeah, thank you.